All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, tomorrow, a number of GOP senators and congressmen are going to object to certifying the Electoral College vote in the House of Representatives and in the United States Senate. It's all you're probably going to hear about on cable news today or tomorrow and the next few days. And it's a central story in American politics. So all the traditional takes about democracy, the republic, and other overwrought language, I will spare you from here on out. Instead, I want to treat this more on the basis of politics. I want to show some people who support this the pitfalls of their position and issue a warning for lessons to be learned after elections. I'll say before I begin that this is a really weird situation for me personally, as I find myself in agreement with ghouls who I despise, like Liz Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, and Ben <laughs> Sass, and find myself in total disagreement with people who I actually align with, like Josh Hawley and other populist Republicans in the House of Representatives. So let's talk about the politics first. This is a point I made repeatedly yesterday, but I want to hammer it home. What Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley and the 10 other Republican senators in the body are doing is signing on to something I call highbrow stop the steal. They're pointing to Pennsylvania election law, or they're asking for a commission to study the results of the election for 10 days. But don't dispute that the Trump campaign has lost in court almost every single suit that they have brought forward today. In effect, what they're trying to do is find a more respectable way to sign on to Trump's efforts to reap the political rewards of standing with Trump, who, by all means, is the single most popular figure in the Republican Party. Politically, it is probably the right thing to do if you want to avoid a primary. But for two of those men in particular, Hawley and Cruz, on the presidential front, I just frankly don't think it's going to work. Going highbrow stop the steal will never be as politically palatable to the Trump base and to those who go all in. An easier way of saying this is this. If you are not willing to go full-blown Dominion voting machines, Sidney Powell, Lynn Wood, then don't bother trying to co-opt or placate this. Because when the time comes, I can assure you that to those voters themselves who are all in, they will reward the politician who is also willing to go all in. Going half in never works in any primary situation. Ask Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz spent years in Washington being a thorn in the Republican establishment side. On immigration, he was a hawk's hawk. He opposed comprehensive immigration reform. And yet, among the Republican base, for whom immigration is literally the number one reason that they voted for Trump, he did not win. Why? Because Trump talked tougher. He talked about a wall. Ted Cruz just didn't sound authentic, despite his excellent and correct policy credentials. That's the truth of politics. The Trump-like figure will always win in a winner-take-all, low-turnout, partisan primary system. Now let's talk about the long-term impacts. Let's leave all the lofty rhetoric out, and let's look at this in terms of long-term actual impact on the GOP in the future. There's one thing that everyone seems to be ignoring here. A Republican has only won the popular vote in a presidential election once in the last eight presidential elections, meaning that if and when a Republican does win the presidency again, it is likely to be an electoral college victory with either a popular vote loss or something very narrow. That is the key point that my friend Jason Willig actually has made over the Wall Street Journal. Let's say a Republican candidate does win the Electoral College in the future, and there's a Democratic Senate. Citing this precedent, they can say, well, my constituents feel that the popular vote is more legitimate than the Electoral College, and then they can certify whatever victory they want in Congress. This is exactly the point that Senator Tom Cotton made in his statement, saying that he would vote to certify the election results, saying, quote, Congress would imperil the Electoral College, which gives small states like Arkansas a vote in presidential elections. Democrats could achieve their longstanding goal of eliminating the Electoral College, in effect, by refusing to count electoral votes in the future for a Republican presidential president elect. Exactly right, Senator. Harry Reid thought he was genius when he decided to nuke the filibuster for judicial nominees. Ask Democrats how that worked out for them. Institutions themselves are designed to be anti-fragile. That is to mean that they need to survive the actual churn of democracy. Now look, nobody talks about corrupt institutions more than those of us at this show. But the key to solving for corruption is not to make institutions more partisan. That actually makes them more corrupt and less democratic. Lastly, and more important is this, 
Many of those on the right, like myself, took great delight in destroying the Russiagate delusions of the mainstream media and elite left over the last four years. We observed, correctly, that Russiagate was copium for the Democratic faithful who just couldn't face the fact that they had lost a presidential election and needed a grand conspiracy theory. This was actually great for any populist Republican because Russiagate stopped the Democratic Party from asking any legitimate questions about how exactly it lost the 2016 election and instead accelerated their suburbanization as a party. Conspiracy theory cope mechanisms, in short, are terrible for creating any real self-assessment. Sadly, that is what much of the GOP has decided to do this time around. Stop the Steal won't have anyone asking how it is to replicate, if even possible, all of Trump's successes in Florida and Texas with Latinos or asking why he just barely lost in Georgia and Arizona and Wisconsin. We are talking here about a few 10,000 votes in a state, give or take. That's a problem which can be solved, but nobody is trying to. Why? Because they think that it was stolen instead. Conspiracy theory coping mechanisms do nothing to help you in the long run. They only hinder you. I will close with some words written yesterday by Yuval Levin. Quote, to knowingly pretend a lie is true is simply put to lie. Doing that carefully enough to let you claim you're only raising questions only makes it even clear that you know you're lying. Lying to people is no way to speak for them or represent them. It is a way of showing contempt for them and of using them rather than being useful to them. Mm. This is what too many Republican politicians have chosen to do in the wake of the election. They have decided to feign anger at a problem that cannot be solved because it does not exist. And this cannot help because, make, because it makes them less capable of taking up real problems on behalf of their voters. And in any case, it makes them cynical liars. Mm. I think that that, well that's really what I wanted well to focus said. on here, too. Because I'm like, look, you know, the democ, all that overwrought, you can go to Don Lemon for that. But I'm like, okay, this is what I mean on the Ted Cruz point. Cruz did everything right whenever he came to Washington in terms of being anti-establishment, immigration, all of that. Trump cleaned his clock. Why? Yeah. Because the base was like, you know, I just trust this guy more than you in order to do something He's about it. He's willing to go further. He's say willing the to say thing that no one else is willing to say. Exactly. And so I'm like, if you're only gonna, if you're only willing to go with like, let us get a commission in a 10 day, bullshit, right? That's what people are gonna say. They're gonna be like, oh, well, if Trump is willing to go Dominion and you're only willing to go there, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. You're grounded in fact. Fine. But this is the thing, you are in the U.S. Senate. You either go all in, either go full Trump or don't. Yeah. Because Trump and whoever will try and follow, people like Marjorie Green Taylor mm -hmm. or Gates or many of these new, newer Republicans who want to be famous, those are the people who will beat you every single time in Iowa and in New Hampshire and elsewhere. So this whole idea that this is going to be politically beneficial to you, it's just wrong. And then, so that's the cynical political take. But then, like I said, whenever it comes to the long term, Harry Reid thought he was a genius when he nuked that filibuster for judicial nominees and opened up multiple seats for Republicans on the Supreme Court and the entire federal judiciary. And I think Democrats are actually much more competent and well-organized <laughs> and universally opposed to the Electoral College. And that Electoral College scenario is much more likely to actually happen than 13 or 14 protest votes during this certain certification of the election. So, gonna hard yeah. disagree that Democrats are more <laughs> organized know. and competent. Um, and know. also, I disagree with you fundamentally about both, you know, ending the filibuster and also on the electoral college piece. I think we should have a more majoritarian democracy. By the way, Arkansas doesn't have a vote or a voice in the presidential process. No one goes and campaigns in Arkansas precisely because of the electoral college and the fact that they're yeah, not but a you swing can fix state. That. You can Nobody, fix that outside of this. Well, they're not, they're not a swing state, and so no one cares about the presidential process. Sure. Put that aside. Um, you're 100% right. A stop the steal dog whistle, yeah. which is what like Josh Hawley's trying to do, your, your language of highbrow yeah. stop the steal is, is. is perfectly said, yeah. is never going to compete with the just like blazing, brazen foghorn that people like Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene yeah. and whoever, and those are the people who are going to win Republican primaries. Yes. So your point also is taken that 
not only is this going to freeze the Republican Party in place and create this rift, which is exactly why Mitch McConnell didn't want mm -hmm. this vote on stop the steal when they're certifying the Electoral College results because it will split the party, it will create this divide, it will make a lot of people very vulnerable to primary challenges and increase the radicalization not only of the Republican base but of the Republicans who represent that base here in Washington. And that has the effect of also freezing the Democratic Party in place yes. because they can rightfully be like, these people are crazy. They won't even acknowledge who wins an election when it's plain as day and invent things and will cynically lie and make up whatever they want for political gain. So how are you going to have some debate about, you know, the direction of the Democratic Party and what type of policy issues should be focused on and the type of candidates and all of that when you're dealing with a bunch of crazy people over here? So it absolutely freezes both sides in place, covers up for any manner of sins of their lack of focus on the American people, their total corruption, the fact that they're sold out to corporations, all of that is swept under the rug in what becomes this just total tribal existential war. Any idea that there's going to be some thoughtful reckoning with Trumpism and like policy based, hey, where does the Republican Party go from what what were the pro-worker parts gone. that we could take yeah, it's gone. done over? That's that's maybe ended. It was, and maybe it was over from the beginning. Well, maybe, but, but yeah. the, the irony yeah. is that one of the people who would have the most political interest in having that debate is Josh Hawley. And now he's helped to sow the seeds that will guarantee for sure mm. that none of that is ultimately going to happen. Look, that's his theory. Maybe it'll work out. We'll find out in Iowa in 2028. But I think the real question to me is that it's even not just him. It's the whole party, which is that if this is what it's all about, look, who got the Medal of Freedom yesterday? It was Devin Nunes and Jim Jordan, right? Jim Jordan <laughs> opposed the $2,000 checks. Right. Yeah. Jim Jordan, you know, helped big tech in those tech hearings, which we covered here. But if being MAGA is just being woke on Russiagate, then OK, then like that, that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And look, Trumpism without Trump is fake. I, I largely believe that now. I do not think I think he's a singular force that is only capable of doing what he did and all that. But there are always lessons to be learned for the future. And like I said, we're talking about like 60,000 votes across five states. That's a problem which can be fixed. Yeah. Some, maybe somebody can figure that out. Maybe Trump himself, Trump himself could recalibrate and say, hey, if I want to run again in 2024, here are the couple of the things that I did wrong and I can come back. I think he could win the election yeah, probably quite so, easily. Yeah. But see, this is what I mean, which is that if this is all you're going to focus on, and as you pointed out earlier, his approval rating is actually dropped, which is rare for a president who is on his way out, then you're going to put yourself in a situation you're only going to be even more vulnerable. I'm not saying he wouldn't win a Republican primary. Do I think in this current iteration that he would be able to win another presidential election? Maybe. I don't know, right? Because it seems that just being odious is what turned him off to just a select group of enough suburban voters across the country who didn't vote for him. This, again, is all about self-reflection. Conspiracy theorizing freezes people into place. I thought Yuval's point about whenever you're lying to somebody, you're doing a disservice to them and to doing a disservice to yourself and to what you're supposed to be doing in the chamber. And I think that's really where we are right now. Yeah, I think so, too. All right. I'm looking forward to your radar next, Crystal.